What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome to your first time here. You probably already know that the economy is going down the toilet very, very quickly. It's been going down for decades, but over the last couple of years and now over the last few months, it is speeding up dramatically. And we're seeing right now, we're seeing the last of the flush down the toilet and it's going to continue to get worse and worse and like i've said on this channel before it's not by accident it's by design they're crashing the economy they're crashing the you and they're crashing the dollar on purpose because they want to bring in this new great reset this new economic system this new system that they have total control over and that's why we see the government right now you know spending trillions and more trillions of dollars on these infrastructure bills these uh pandemic relief packages and things like that it's just a constant print 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 throw it into the economy because they're trying to crash the economy because their masters are dictating that they do these actions to crash the economy that way they have an excuse to bring in this new system this great reset this digital currency that they can control and that's what it's all about guys is about control a lot of people can't fathom you know a world without the dollar being the world reserve currency but that's what it's coming to very very quickly the dollar is going to crash we're going to experience a lot of hyperinflation maybe even deflation on certain items it just depends on what happens it's hard to predict exactly what is going to happen but we know at the end that the end result is going to be the crash of the dollar and an economic collapse here in the united states for sure so how do you protect yourself from that how do you prepare for that you know as preppers we've talked video after video I and mean, we've talked about it agnosium food storage and it's extremely important however i'm not going to cover food storage here in this video because we all know that everyone knows that's a prepper that they should be stockpiling food so we're going to start out today talking about five things that you need to do to prepare for this coming economic collapse and number one is precious metals now i'm not a financial advisor this isn't financial advice this is just things i'm doing now and what i think should be common sense for anyone looking at the economic situation we're in now and watching that economic system that dollar that economy going down the toilet so precious metals now you could put back gold and that is an option if you want to retain your wealth however as preppers we're looking for things that we can actually barter so putting back you know large bars of gold you know ounces of gold is it the best option in my opinion for preppers to put back and to barter with it's great if you want to if you have a lot of wealth which most of us don't if you want to hedge your uh assets and to keep your wealth then you can invest that in those larger quantities of gold however for just prepping purposes for bartering purposes i prefer the junk silver the mercury dimes because it's easy to recognize that as being made of 90 percent silver and it's in a small domination so it'll be more easy to actually take that and to barter that and exchange that for goods and services that you may need so that you I mean you can go any way you want but for me personally that is my favorite form of silver to stockpile you can do other things if you want you can get silver and ounce bars and things however you know or even larger that's going to be more difficult to exchange it's going to be more difficult to barter that for you know smaller smaller packages that you might need smaller services that you might need lower priced products where you can take a smaller denomination like that like those mercury dimes and you can exchange those and they're easily recognizable and easily easily distinguished between you know a regular dime and a mercury dime it's 
there's no comparison to the way they look. They're the same size, however the way they look. You know, anyone knows what they are. It's easy to look that up online to find out what the value of that is. And I've found that a lot of people, you know, will actually give more than the spot value for that because it is not common. So, to me, the most reliable and the most uh, barterable type of silver to put back. But like I said, if you want, you can put back gold or whatever. But for me, that's my favorite. I also like the Liberty Dollars. Those are good also. However, if I had to choose between stockpiling these and stockpiling the Mercury Dimes, I would go with the Mercury Dimes simply because it's going to be easier to break that down value-wise to barter for something that is of equal value. You know, like a haircut, like some food, like some ammunition or something like that. Now, I know a lot of people will say, you can't eat silver. And, no, you can't. But you can barter this and trade this for something you can eat, something you can defend yourself with, or something you can't produce on your own. Services that you don't know how to accomplish on your own. Like, for example, you know, if you need to go in and you need to have a tooth pull or something like that, you can pay with silver. You can also pay with gold, of course. However, like I said, the mercury dimes are in a smaller denomination, so it's easier to break those down to the amount you need to pay for specific services and products. Okay, guys, next on this list is cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not an expert on cryptocurrency, and I prefer to keep most of my investments and most of my hedge against inflation in silver. However, cryptocurrency and a lot of people who are much more knowledgeable than I am about it is recommending that you put back or that you buy cryptocurrency and I think it's a good idea to have some of that however I would put most the main bulk of my resources into silver because you know I don't know what would happen with the cryptocurrency if say the internet goes down if the power grid goes down. I know it's going to definitely be difficult to access that and to use that since everything is done online or through apps and things. But still, you know, cryptocurrency can be used for, you know, purchases online even when the dollar collapses, for example. And keeping that in mind, I think it's a good idea to actually have some of that. However, personally, I'm not going to go into that big time. I'm not going to invest you know, lots and lots of resources into that. You know, maybe if you have the resources, you could invest, you know, a few thousand dollars into cryptocurrency and take that, say, three, four, five thousand dollars and invest that in cryptocurrency just in case to hedge your bets because it's best to have, you know, many different sources of food. I've talked about that before, but also many different sources of actual wealth and silver, gold, Bitcoin can all be used to purchase what you need with. But personally, I would put the bulk of my resources into silver and more specifically, those mercury dimes. And then put some into Bitcoin to hedge your bets simply because, you know, you can use it to still trade online and to buy things online. And I think that will become even more common as the dollar continues to collapse. Now there's other things besides Bitcoin. For example, there's Pirate Chain. It's supposed to be more uh, secure, more private. However, I don't know about that. Guys, if you do, put that in the comments below because I'm sure many of you know more you know, about cryptocurrencies than I do. Like I said, it's not a big thing for me. However, you want to hedge your bets. I think it's best to do that. So silver and a little bit of cryptocurrency, maybe $2,000 converted now into cryptocurrency, or maybe even 5000 if you're well off, but I wouldn't go much more than that right now because you know, I don't know where it's going, and I can't make financial advice at all. However, for myself, I don't know enough about it to invest more than that, so I can't suggest that anyone else you know, invest more than that in that cryptocurrency system. And next is something that we can probably all agree on, and that is to have a productive property you know if you can own your own property that is great it doesn't have to be you know a huge property it can be a half an acre it can be an acre five acres or so whatever you have if you own that outright then you are in the catbird seat and guys even if your soil you know isn't 
the best for growing to make that property productive you know if you have heavy clay if you have rock layer right close to the top close to the surface you can always put in raised beds for example but you need to have property if you can get out of property that is great guys you can buy you know some cheap land somewhere in the mountains if nothing else if you can find that cheap enough and pay for that pay cash for that and you can make that property productive then you're in the catbird seat as the saying goes you know you can grow a lot of your own food on that property you can raise chickens on that property if you have enough property you can raise cattle on that property let that cattle graze you can raise uh, honeybees you can raise rabbits for example if you have a pond or a lake on that property you can make that lake produce fish for example property and making that property productive will go a long ways to making sure that you survive this coming economic collapse you know if you have your home and your own an acre of ground for example do everything you can to make that acre as productive as you possibly can make that produce as much food as you possibly can because you're going to have to eat and if you can produce you know a large portion or even all of your food then you're definitely ahead of the game because you know the silver the gold the cryptocurrency it's going to be used to purchase food with to purchase things to work that land with to produce that food if you already have those items on hand you know you won't need to rely on purchasing because you already have it on hand so having property and having that property be as productive as possible you know if you have just a half an acre do what you can to make that as productive as possible an acre is better three acres is really good if you have five or more then you are doing awesome but make it productive and do everything you can to get out of debt you don't want to be owing on that property unless you absolutely have to and if you owe on that property if you can pay that you know take your bank book your payment book go to the bank and like I, now this ain't this isn't financial advice it's just what i do and pay that those payments 12 payments in advance that way you have a buffer and then if you can you know you can pay on the principal through the year or you can pay more payments if that's what you want to do but you want to have a cushion you don't want to be one month you know until you get evicted you want to keep that paid up if possible for as long as you possibly can if you can't go ahead and just pay that debt off and guys next is barter skills you want to be skilled enough to produce something that people will pay you for that people will trade you know food for people that need something will pay you to produce that something and if you can repair things that's going to be an awesome business because as things get more expensive or get less available people is going to stop you know just throwing things away and going and purchasing something else to wanting to get that product repaired if you can repair electronics if you can repair things like refrigerators stoves anything that people use often if you can repair that you have the tools and the parts put back to repair that then you're doing great guys set up a shop set up a like a Emmett's fix it shop on the Andy Griffith show if you've watched that show before be able to repair things and people will bring you business and trade you food they will trade you labor they will trade you you know those mercury dimes for example for your services if you can make something if you can produce something that's great guys but try to figure out you know what you can do for a home business what you can do to provide for your community what you can do to help the, the people in your community that will make you an asset you want to be looked at as an asset as a provider you don't want to be looked at as a burden or even worse you know someone who is trying to take from others someone who's trying to steal from people in the community you want to be able to provide for the community you want to be an asset you want to have barter skills you want to be able to fix things produce things repair things you want to be able to do whatever people needs done look at your community 
it's best to look at your individual community and your individual skills and figure out what you need to do get the tools to do that with and develop the skills to do that because you want to be able to barter you want to be able to keep going in this collapsed economy because you can't put back enough food enough gear enough supplies enough parts enough everything that you're going to need for ever so you're going to need to barter you're going to need to have those skills to fix things repair things build things you're going to need that silver put back you're going to need that cryptocurrency put back to barter with because like i said you can't produce everything that you need you can't think everything you're going to need you're like they don't have the room you know to store back everything that you need in the inventory that and keep up with all that and that's where these skills and where these things like cryptocurrency and gold and silver coins and bars come in to keep you going even when your supplies run low plus you know if you had supplies put back in your food stores for example and you're also bartering trading and doing things you can make that last much much longer you might be able to stretch that year of food storage out to the last two years three years five years or even more so have different layers different layers of things you can fall back on to survive this coming economic collapse that we're going to see here very very shortly guys next is one we can all agree on i'm sure well at least most of us can anyways and that is have a means of defending yourself you want to be able to protect your property you want to be able to protect your family your family first yourself and then your property and then your community so you need a way to defend yourself and the most effective way to do that is of course with firearms if you have no if you have no firearms whatsoever and you're looking to buy your first one then my suggestion is to buy a good pump action shotgun either a 20 gauge or a 12 gauge and try to get that in the combo model you know one with the longer sporting barrel for you know hunting squirrels rabbits upland fowl and things like that and also with a shorter 18 inch right barrel or home defense barrel that way you have the most versatility you can buy these for around 350 dollars mossberg makes good shotguns i think put that get that and get a different and get a variety of different shot sizes i prefer number four shot and number six shot for the most versatility as far as using that for wild game and things and foraging and protecting your crops and things like that number four buckshot and double walk buckshot but preferably number four buckshot but both work really really well for home defense if you want to stretch your range out and you should and look into putting back some rifle slugs good for deer good for elk good for bear good for home defense at more range and it's a big old piece of lead big old chunk of lead that will make a big old hole in whatever you shoot and like i said it will stretch your effectiveness out to 100 yards or even more with practice but a good 12 gauge 20 gauge pump action shotgun should be your first choice in my opinion second should be a good handgun because you want to be where you can have a handgun on you at all times because it's difficult to carry a shotgun around with you at all times having a handgun concealed will go a long way you know to keeping you safe especially when you're out away from your property my favorite there's all kinds of good handguns guys there isn't any one specific best handgun in my opinion but if i had to suggest a best handgun in my opinion would be the glock model 19 nine millimeter is going to be the one of the most available ammunitions to purchase 15 round magazine the handgun is like a mid-sized handgun so it's good for you know belt carry it's good for concealed carry because of the size very good handgun very reliable and it's what i carry i carry that and i also carry a smith and wesson air weight 38 special now guys to recap if you can just afford two different firearms a 12 gauge or 20 gauge pump action shotgun and put back the right ammunition for it. that's different the different shot sizes and different ammunition for different purposes the shot the buckshot the slugs and a good handgun if you have 
more finances, more resources than you want to look into maybe getting a 22 rifle. The Ruger 1022 is excellent. And once you get that, you know, if you want to get something even more formidable to defend yourself with, then look into something like, you know, an AR-15, for example, or, you know, an M-14 or something like that in 308. But you can do pretty much everything you need to do with four or five firearms. You don't need to go overboard and spend thousands of dollars on building a 30 or 40 gun survival stockpile of firearms. You can do everything you need to do with four and especially with five firearms. If you want to go number five, you can get something like a bolt action 308 for longer range and for you know larger game. So that's five right there and we'll cover everything you need to do with a firearm. We'll cover home defense, protecting your crops, protecting your livestock, concealed carry, you know, an AR-15 for defense of your property, a 308 for reaching out and touching someone. So five firearms. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, then get a big thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm the Creek Mormon here, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.